commission meeting to order on October 5th at 4 p.m. Uh, present in, I guess, on location is Jay Bemke, Shane Blazer, Daniel Hansen. Online we have Susan Feith, Dean Veneman, Kyle Kearns. Is there anybody else that I did not mention? Okay. So online, uh, could you introduce yourself if you just joined us? What's that? Shane Burkhart's online? Okay. So let's take... Hey, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shane. Second. Shane is here. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So tonight, uh, and I, I'm usually guilty of this. This is Shane Blazer. If we could identify ourselves before we speak, so we all know who's speaking. So our first item on the agenda is the approval of the report from, tem from September 21st, 2020, Planned Commission meeting. What are your wishes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion by Bemke, second by Mr. Hansen. Is there any further discussion? Uh, could I, add, this is Susan Feith. Um, in item three, sub D, community development staff shall have the authority to approve minor modifications to the plan. Could we just have a definition of what constitutes a minor modification. Is there a legal definition for that, please? Kyle? Can't hear you, Kyle. Can't hear you, Kyle. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes, thank you. So the only place the zoning code that I'm familiar with Oh, you lost you again. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. So I'm not aware of any section within the zoning code that identifies the plan's type modification. We lost you again. If you can hold on, Kyle. Tyler's coming. So does anyone else have anything regarding the minutes? Okay. Let's just give them a second to see if there's a technical issue they can assist with. Can kind of barely hear you, but not very loud. Mr. Kearns. All right. So, in response to your question, I don't know of a spot in the zoning code that identifies or clarifies minor modifications. So, really, it's the interpretation of staff that would make that call. And in my in my interpretation, a 
minor modification would be, um, let's say, changing the, the parking lot slightly, you know, adding a stall or removing two stalls or, you know, changing the location of a handicap stall or changing the configuration of the landscaping. Um, it's one in which uh, the, the standards within the zoning code are still met. So they're still meeting the handicap requirements and the parking requirements and the landscaping requirements. They've just chosen to, to change um, maybe the configuration. And it, it, it happens more than you think, especially in regards to landscaping. A lot of times landscaping is generally identified, but the species change just given what's in stock throughout the year. And so that's why um, uh, I think it's appropriate to allow staff to approve those minor changes to the plan um, during the construction uh, and or just before the construction rather than having to come back to the plan commission for approval. Okay, let me just ask one further question then. The item that we were approving in this particular instance was an off-site parking lot for Connexus Credit Union, which um, I believe is on the corner, was in the plan shown on the corner of Miller Avenue and 7th Street. So that was correct? Yes, that was the item, correct, the off-street okay. parking site. Yep. And the series of uh, conditions that we put on that was to allow engineering to review and approve the um, ingress, egress components and the stormwater components. Um, my question specifically would be, so if engineering decides that ingress, egress is no longer entirely on 7th Street and instead part of that occurs on Miller Avenue. Does that come back to Planning Commission? Is that minor or is that major? I would consider that to be major. As that may affect the location of parking, it may affect you know, the traffic to the site, um, specifically, you know, it's bringing vehicles, you know, closer into the neighboring residential um, area. And so I, I think that would be considered major in my interpretation. All right, would it be um, appropriate then to have some definition of minor and major uh, going forward with regard to, um, I can see the difference in changing the striping on the parking lot or um, moving some trees around or changing the species of a tree, but um, where in this process would it be possible for folks in the immediate vicinity who are impacted by a, a change, say for instance, in the location of an ingress, egress, or even the stormwater, for instance, as it might impact somebody's backyard on the other lot behind that parking lot. Oh, you muted again. Sorry about that. I think we can define it in the future that would require an ordinance amendment within the zoning code. I think uh, the most appropriate place to do it is, is probably under the site plan and plan of operations section um, or possibly just as a general definition because I know it, it also comes into play with conditional use permits which are another form of approval through this body. And so it's something we can we can definitely look at closer and then possibly bring before the planning commission at a future date. Okay, thank you for that um, discussion. I would appreciate it if um, if you could do that, Kyle. Noted. I will. Uh, I'll do some research, and and you'll possibly see something in the near future. Thank you. Anyone have anything? This is Blazer. Anyone have anything further on the minutes? Seeing none, we have a motion by Bemke, seconded by Hansen to approve the report. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. 
Our next item of business is Plan 20-0817- Community Development Department Public Hearing and Action on a Request to Amend the Zoning Code Chapter 11 of the Municipal Code to identify and define a light manufacturing assembly use including placement within the zoning districts. Mr. Kern? Yeah, so I will. I, I can do a brief introduction here, and then and then uh, remember to open the public hearing at some point. But uh, so this was uh, this request before you is basically a discrepancy that exists within the zoning code, and that discrepancy was found in reviewing the the Woodlands Business Center covenants. So the covenants were created at the time that the 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 business district or the business center was created. And those covenants specifically identified that a light manufacturing and assembly type use could be approved uh, by the city if it complied with the requirements within the B5 district. What had then happened um, you know, several years later and, and recently in 2018 is that the, the city adopted a new zoning code. And in that new zoning code, the the use uh, the use table specifically does not permit light industrial or any type of industrial type manufacturing or assembly type uses within the B5 district. So there's a, this discrepancy then that exists. I think the original intent of the Woodlands Business Center was to allow for those uses where they met the general intent of the surrounding properties. You know the the, the aesthetics were met. Um, they weren't. Right, heavy industrial noise creating, um, tra heavy traffic creating type businesses. But if they were fitting within the business park, I think it was the general intent that they could be approved by the city. So in this case, given that intent and, and, and in my research, I think it, it does seem appropriate to permit um, such a use within the B5 district. And in doing so, I've, I've made a recommendation as presented in the staff memo that basically defines light manufacturing and allows it within the district as a conditional use. And so you'll see again uh, that definition, the description, the parking requirements, and the supplemental standards, again, which touched upon what I already mentioned, that the exterior building appearance, appearance shall blend in with the surrounding neighborhood. Um, at a minimum, the building face fronting the street shall have masonry, glass, ethos, et cetera. All activities excluding loading and unloading shall be conducted entirely within the confine of the building and uh, indoor storage of products or materials shall occur. So again, no outdoor storage of materials. And then I am proposing that that light manufacturing use be injected or allowed within the B5 district as a conditional use, which is important because that means that the surrounding property owners would be notified uh, if a request is made as well as a public hearing would be held if a request is made in the B5 district. And then it would be permitted in the M1 and the M2 industrial districts, just given the difference in character between uh, that, that B5 district and those industrial districts. Thank you, Mr. Kearns. Uh, let's open up the public hearing. And so if there's anybody who would like to speak in favor of the change? Uh, is there anybody who would like to speak in favor of the change? And lastly, is there anybody who would like to speak in favor of the change? Okay, seeing none, let's, uh, is anybody who wants to speak against the request? And for a second time, anybody want to speak against the request? And lastly, is there anybody who would like to speak against the request? I'm seeing none or hearing none. Plan Commission, what are your wishes? Or any discussion? Um, Shane, you looking for a motion on a second first, or can we discuss prior to? Um, yeah, why don't we do a motion and a second first, and then we can have a discussion. 
I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, let's. How about we have a motion and a second, then take up a discussion. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the changes. We have a motion by Bemke to approve the change. We have a second by Mr. Hansen. Now we can open the floor for discussion. Okay, I guess I'll speak up here. This is Susan. Um, with regard to the light manufacturing category in the B5, are you proposing that this change in the preliminary um, reference here in your memo, you say within zoning districts. So I'm assuming that you are proposing other zoning districts besides B5? Correct. And you'll see that on page 7 of 26, where you see the use table. Uh, in light blue are the changes that I'm recommending, and, and the C in that table represents a conditional use within the B5 district. And then the other places I'm recommending the use are in the M1 and the M2 district as a permitted use. And again, the, the difference between the, the C and the P is that as a conditional use, you have that added um, review with the conditional use permit, meaning that, again, the surrounding property owners are notified if a request is made within that district for that use and uh, a public hearing is held as well. So in the heavy industrial districts or, or the M1 and M2 districts, they would be permitted by right, essentially, and you would not have that conditional use permit process needed for those heavier, uh, more intense manufacturing districts, but you would need it for the B5 district where the business park uh, exists. Okay, so the question then is, um, in acquisition of a conditional use permit, is it required that that go before planning commission or are you um, moving toward um, circumventing that? The conditional use permit requires uh, under state statute, planning commission and common council action. Okay. Um, in other words, um, it would be on the agenda of a planning commission and public notice. Correct. And we would notify the surrounding property owners, correct. What's your radius, 150 feet? Oh, I believe it's 300 feet. 300. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing and hearing none, we have a motion by Bemke, seconded by Hansen to approve the request. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Our next item of business, number three, is Plan 20-0720, Community Development Department, a public hearing and action on a request to amend the Zoning Code, Chapter 11 of the Municipal Code, to modify secondary review requirements for the users, or uses, sorry. Mr. Kearns? Thank you. So this uh, this this uh, this request is, I guess, somewhat similar in, in, in regarding the, the conversation we already had about permitted and conditional uses. And I think the, the easiest way to, to summarize this, at least initially, is to walk through it as an example. And so, if you don't mind, I'm going to basically walk through the process now. Um, regarding a permitted use, and if again we, we have questions regarding conditional uses, we can we can touch upon that subject again. But basically, right now in the zoning code, the use table, which if you reference your packet, is page 21 through 26. That use table 
um, is basically the, the table that we use uh, in, in zoning administration to reference for all types of development, ranging from a single family home to heavy industrial development and, and everything in between. And so what you have to do when you get a request for any sort of development is look at the series land use in the first column and, I, and, and identify right what, what the requester is requesting. So in this case, the example I'm going to use is a restaurant. So as a restaurant, um, in most cases, it's a permitted use within the most or within within zoning districts, um, certain zoning districts. Obviously, a restaurant is not permitted in the residential districts. Um, but where it is a permitted use, uh, there are also secondary review requ requirements for those uses. And so, in column two, you'll see the secondary review requirements and the. The acronyms there, the, the AR stands for Architectural Review, the SP stands for Site Plan Review, and the PO stands for Plan of Operations Review. The ZP stands for Zoning Permit. That means that in addition to the normal review that would occur, uh, the staff review, right? Staff, every time we get a request, uh, there are certain requirements. They've got to meet the parking requirements, the landscaping requirements, the lighting requirements. Uh, engineer will, engineering will do a thorough review of the stormwater requirements. In addition to those staff requirements as outlined in the zoning code, the secondary review through plan commission are again the architecture, the site plan, and the plan of operations. And so in many cases, in almost every case, um, you know, aside from a single family home and a few other types of developments, uh, there's that secondary review required. And so that means that uh, as part of the process, the, the restaurant in this case, let's say that it was within the B2 commercial zoning district where it is permitted, they would have to make an application request um, through my office. We would review and work with them to ensure that all the applicable zoning conditions are met. Um, that they are then placed on a, an upcoming agenda for plan commission. And then plan commission would basically review the staff memo, the plans and so forth, um, and make a recommendation based on the set of procedures that are outlined within the zoning code. And I did not include, include that set of procedures in the attachments, but for, for all of those, there are very thorough procedural requirements for reviewing site plans for reviewing architecture and a plan of operation as well as a zoning permit. And those site plan requirements basically state that, uh, and architectural requirements, more so the site plan requirements basically state that you've got to meet again the parking requirements, the landscaping requirements, the lighting requirements as written in the zoning code. So basically it's, it, is, it is that, it's, it's a secondary review. Well, in, in other communities, um, it, it's, it's, it's popular, I would say, it's probably the majority of other communities where if, if you're a permitted use within a district, there is no secondary review. If you're permitted, you work with the zoning department. Um, the zoning department reviews the, the development. Uh, the developer still has to meet all of those requirements, but it's just a staff review, a local review is what we call it. Uh, after it meets those requirements, it goes on to the building inspectors. And similarly, the building inspectors review uh, the building code, right? They review the plans that come in um, if they're reviewed locally, and then they perform the, ins the subsequent inspections uh, for that development. In this case, however, uh, during the zoning code rewrite, um, uh, you know, all of these uses were identified to have a secondary review. And unfortunately, a, a secondary review means that developments can get somewhat lengthy. Um, it's an added step in the development process. So as, as we saw last week, or I'm sorry, two weeks ago at the Special Plan Commission meeting, there were a few projects that wanted to get underway and wanted to break ground before the winter months. And so staff you know, worked with uh, the Plan Commission in, in finding a quorum, uh, creating an agenda, uh, drafting site plans, I'm sorry, drafting staff memos, reviewing the projects, and getting them uh, approved so that those developments could go forward before the end of the year. And so while there's 
there, there, you know, the, the added review can be somewhat detrimental um, to a timeline of a project. You know, it still certainly serves its purpose. Um, you know, there are, there are obvious times when staff may, re, may miss something um, within their local review, the internal review from a zoning standpoint. And so the secondary re review can assist in, in ensuring that applicable code requirements are met. For the most part, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm, I'm fairly thorough in everything I do. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's ultimately, you know, going to be the responsibility of the developer to meet the requirements as written within the zoning code, unless there's an exception identified in the code. Um, but I also recognize that again, it, it, it can be detrimental and, um, can be somewhat burdensome to have this secondary review. And, and so therefore, based on that, I've re recommended that we remove, uh, for several, um, uses, we remove that secondary review requirement. And it might be a little confusing in, in the way I've recommended that, but essentially I've placed an asterisk, um, in the land use matrix table. Um, as well as uh, defined or identified within the architectural review and the site plan review of operations sections of the code, uh, what that asterisk means. And so those land uses designated as requiring site plan review with an SP and an, a and an asterisk or plan of operation review, again, a PO with an asterisk, in the land use matrix, Appendix A must comply with the requirements of this division unless otherwise noted in the table, where denoted without the symbol, the asterisk symbol, such standards of this division shall be met but are not acted upon by the plan commission. So where you do not see an asterisk, um, they would not need to go to plan commission for that secondary review. And rather than you know, look through the table to identify where all those are, I've summarized all of those on page 19 and page, I think two of them are on page 20. Um, and, you know, there are about probably 40 to 50 different uses um, where I'm recommending that uh, internal review only occur for those uses. And uh, again, um, it's important to note that that internal review is still uh, thoroughly looking at landscaping, parking, the site plan, the plan of operations, the ingress, the egress, the stormwater management, um, it just doesn't require that, uh, that um, secondary review. And in closing, the last thing I want to note is I have not recommended any changes to the permitted nature of any uses or the conditional nature of any uses. The permitted uses remain the same. The conditional use, uses remain the same, those that require a conditional use permit. Um, aside from uh, the most recent amendment that you just acted on previously, that has not been incorporated into the table you see on 21 through 26. And that's all I have. This is Shane. Thank you, Mr. Kearns. Um, let's get the public hearing, hearing open. Does anyone want to speak in favor of this request? Secondly, does anyone want to speak in favor of this request? And lastly, anyone speaking or wish to speak in favor of this request? Okay, does anyone for a first time want to speak against this request? And for a second time, does anyone want to speak against the request? Lastly, does anyone want to speak against this request? Hearing and seeing none, we can close the public hearing. Uh, Plan Commission, what are your what are your wishes? This is Susan speaking. Um, I guess, given the length of the the list and the multitude of. Um, questions as you work through it, um, I would uh, recommend or I would move to table a request um, to continue discussion with regard to the specifics in the, um, the list that is on page 19 with the two additional items on page 20. We have a motion by Susan to table this item. Uh, 
do you wish to table it to the next meeting or do you have a date or well i guess my my thought would be just um to give people enough opportunity to research the um the implications of the um i i don't know how many um categories there are in that list but i would assume that they're probably what 30 or 50 and to move through the the matrix in a, a systematic way to uh, make sure that we get an opportunity to ask questions about each of them individually and what impact they might have on on the various um, outcomes could be one meeting I, this is Shane. I'll second that request and uh, um, take it to the floor for a vote. I guess my my concern would be that if there's questions, we should take the time to kind of go through them and uh, answer those questions. I'm not sure how I feel about going one by each one, but I think it's important that if there are questions that we take the time to to answer them. Anybody else have any discussion? Uh, well, this is Susan again, and I, I might just expand on Kyle's um, example of the, the restaurant request. <clears throat> Hypothetically, if um, it came before planning commission and um, there were people in the 300-foot radius that had some sort of a concern, and we remanded it to staff, for um, review, there would be no um, secondary alternative for those people with their objection or concern to ascertain whether or not the objection or concern had been satisfied unless it came back to Planning Commission where it would be um, subject to an open review. And I understand and I commiserate with the idea that people are anxious to get their projects going and so forth, but on the other hand, um, I think it's important to have that public input and to, to make sure that um, every project starts out on footing that is positive and compatible with the neighborhood, compatible with the needs of the community and fair. So, in just a point of clarification, um, the the zoning code does not require uh, notification to the surrounding property owners for site plan review, uh, for architectural review, for a zoning permit, or for plan of operations. And I believe uh, the the intent is because the the secondary review for those items is primarily to ensure that the applicable code sections within the zoning code are met. Now, the, the plan commission can certainly take in other factors and considerations, but you know, specifically, again, the, the zoning code doesn't require a public hearing or notification of the surrounding property owners for those, those site plan and architectural reviews. The other thing to note is that there are, you know, if, if you look at the broader picture of zoning and comprehensive planning, you, know, you could argue that this is a, a, a fourth or fifth level of review. I mean, the, the, the general intent of the comprehensive plan is to identify existing land uses and future land uses. So when you plan in the comp plan, you, know, you, you, you put together and you adopt uh, an official map, a future land use map, and you identify what the future land use will be of properties so it's property specific throughout the property and we have that we've adopted that and we've updated that in 2018 thereafter the other mechanism that again kind of drills in a little bit further is the zoning code and the zoning code has zoning districts and within those zoning districts you have allowed uses permitted uses and conditional uses and so those are those are two levels of of, of enforcement or administration of of properties and, and permitted and or conditional uses or prohibited uses within those districts. And so if, if for example, the future land use map identifies that 
parts of the downtown, let's say, should no longer be industrial and they should be mixed use, right? Because we've seen a change in the land use pattern of downtowns, um, then it's right. It would be identified in the comprehensive plan. And then we would work to rezone the property. Once the property is rezoned appropriately, then obviously you'd have the appropriate uh, uses permitted, uh, conditional or, or prohibited within the zoning code. And then you'd still have the local review, the, the, the internal staff review of those uses. Um, and I think, right, if, if, if it gets tabled, I, I think I can follow up with providing the, the code language. Again, it's, it's somewhat lengthy, I think, for example, the, the site plan of operation uh, procedures is, is about four or five pages, and, and the architectural procedures for review is, is a couple pages. But in there, it identifies um, you know, what, the, what the basis of de the decision by the plan commission should be. And then it also um, identifies, uh, you know, what if any uh, conditions could be placed upon the approval uh, by plan commission. So um, that might help put into context at least uh, for those items, site plan, plan of operation, architectural review, at least what's required, what should be taken into consideration, and then what the basis of the decision should be based upon if this is tabled. Okay, um, Kyle, can you speak to, for instance, this issue that we have, which to me is a real one. Um, it just came up within our deliberations a couple of months ago, and that had to do with the um, exception that we made or the, um, the process that we went through to um, allow a group um, daycare inhabit the old YMCA building on Pepper. And under the request that we got, that property is currently zoned M1, um, which is a rather inappropriate zoning for that property at the moment, I would say, given the, uh, the changes that have occurred in and around what used to be the site of industrial plastics and open um, property until Rennes came in and invested $6 million in an assisted living facility right across the street. So if you were to look at your industrial and manufacturing codes here in construction equipment sales and service and <clears throat> the requisition for architectural review site plan plan of operation, and I forget what CP is, but at any point, this does not um, appear to be a, um, a requirement that um, impacts the planning commission, is that correct? And it's a okay. permitted use in M1. <clears throat> so, so um, in, go ahead. How would we um, address what there is a probably um, an anomaly in zoning, which probably should be addressed? And if um, the person who made the original request were to follow through with his original request, he would as I understand it, have the ability right now to construct <clears> or <throat> to create a contractor's yard on that site, to sell and service construction equipment on that site, to um, sell trucks and service heavy equipment on that site. Is that not correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, I think we as planning commission members should be um, sensitive to the idea that there be a public, uh, an opportunity for public input in some fashion or another in situations like this one or like many of the others that um, could become questions in the, the long list of changed um, uh, 
requirements that you're recommending. <clears throat> yeah, and in, in, in response, that, that specific request um, for the adult daycare was under a different section of code because it was a non-conforming use. So they requested to register the non-conforming use and then under the, the same or similar code, they, they had requested to convert the use. Um, and in doing so, right, they, they had followed the procedures. But in my memo, I did identify for that request that rezoning was another option, uh, an applicable option, one that from a long-term standpoint was, was the better option because that's, that's an example of where you had, you know, that was probably once, you know, near the edge of the city and it made sense for it to, to be and operate as manufacturing. However, as the development happened around the city, it was residential or mixed use in nature. And now you somewhat have uh, an anomaly surrounded by residential development. Um, however, it was, you know, th the applicant's determination that he did not want to pursue the rezoning, but rather pursue the, the conversion um, of the non-conforming use instead. But you're correct in that, right? That, that would be an example where, um, you know, he could put up um, a permitted, any permitted uses within the M1 district. Um, and right now, a majority of those uses require plan commission review. And so again, it gets back to the point earlier where you know, the, the secondary review certainly serves a purpose, um, but I think also there, there, there's benefits to, to simplifying the review process within the zoning code. Thank you, Kyle. Is there any further discussion? So we have a motion and a second to table this item. Hearing or, oh, go I, ahead, Ben. I please. just have a question. I have a question, but we're going to table this to continue to the discussion, correct? That's my, yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, if that's the vote. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots or signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Our last item on our agenda, I believe, is adjournment. Yep, item four is adjournment. What are your wishes? We have a motion by Bemke, and I'll second it. Blazer to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Have a good night.